Hi Descendants, welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm going to give you my ultimate Lepic guide and how you can melt bosses in around 10 seconds. You don't need to have any help from anyone. You All you need to have is your ultimate Lepic, this bad boy, melting these bosses right now in this video. I decided to shorten my guides and make them a little bit shorter where I will talk about one build at a time. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my solo build. And if you enjoy this video, if this video makes, I don't know, 100 likes, I'm going to upload also a group fight build uh, variant of this one where you can actually bring the ultimate Lepic to group fights and what can help you out. Stick to the end of the video because I actually have good and bad news for you. Let's get straight to it. All right, let's get to the guide. So ultimate Lepic. Now the good news is you will be able to melt bosses in around 10 seconds, maybe less. If you optimize it even more, if you go and min max everything, you can probably do it in less. The bad news is this is a very expensive build. And when I say, when I say expensive, I mean really expensive ladies and gentlemen let's talk about how many crystallization catalysts do you need if you do, if you cannot tell let me tell you a lot there is only one slot that i haven't uh, used over here for uh, in terms of crystallization catalysts um, there is no need for me right now to spend one more over here and i got tired of spending over and over and over again now keep in mind that every time you assign a crystallization catalyst, obviously you will also have to re-level the entire um, from level one to level forty. Now with the speed leveling methods, you can do that uh, pretty efficiently in probably half an hour. But still, this is also pretty time consu uh, consuming. The more consuming part is obviously you getting crystallization catalyst because this is uh, specifically the blueprints is a pain in the butt. But that's another topic. Right, so this is an investment, really a big investment that you need to do in order to make this work. So, if I disappoint you with this, with those, with these news, I'm a, I am sorry, but this is the reality. I don't want to give you any false information or you know expectations for you. This is going to be hell expensive, and it will require you to make this investment in order to to get to this part. So I'm just giving you a reality check. I'm giving you the heads up. Hey, if you want to get there, it's going to be expensive. It's going to take a lot of resources, not only crystallization catalyst but it's also going to take you a lot of gold and Kuiper to level up all these bad boys. Let's talk about the modules one by one. I'm going to highlight the modules very quickly. Uh, I'm going to highlight why this build is so OP and what is uh, so great about it. Let me talk about the stats very quickly. If we see the overall stats, the skill power modifier 96% right now, skill cooldown 50%, skill cooldown right now we don't care about. Those are the two very important things. Skill critical hit rate 207.7%, skill critical hit damage 207.7%. Um, interesting how I nailed this exact same percentages over here. Fire skill power 81%, max MP 18.9% and skill duration I have at 57%. Now you can play around with a couple of mods. Uh, I'm not going to go into details right now. And if this video is actually going to make 100 likes, ladies and gentlemen, at least 100 likes, I'm going to release a second part of this guide where this is, I'm going to show you my build that I'm using more for uh, group fights, not for solo purposes. I purely use him for melting bosses right now for myself so that I can you know, grind materials, components, and, and, and stuff like this, uh, or amorphous materials myself very quickly without the hustle of group fights and, and, and donkeys in my team not knowing the tactics and stuff like this. The reason why this is not group friendly is because he's very squishy. This is a glass cannon, this is a full damage build, and if you die, you, you'll mess up the fight and... and most likely you will die because the boss will be a little bit more tanky and, and, and stuff like this. However, this is about a solo build right now. Uh, you can go ahead and try it out and do it in boss fights as well. As long as you don't care about the dying part, that's cool. Now let's talk about the Firearm Master. Firearm Master is an Ultimate Lepic exclusive. This makes it an Ultimate Lepic exclusive build. 
the reason why this is very strong is changing the weapon increases the skill power changing from basically activating your ultimate is also counting as a change as a weapon this is why you don't even have to swap out from your first hand to your second hand you don't have to swap weapons it's gonna work perfectly this is why this build is possible and this makes it strong mid-air maneuvering you don't even need to have any maneuvering uh for you know the boss fights that i showed you in the beginning of the video i just have mid-air maneuvering i love it that's my favorite mod uh, the only thing is keep in mind that you need to put a catalyst over here as well uh, in order to get the five extra capacity otherwise you will not make this build work Maximize power. This increases your skill power modifier uh, and the skill cooldown. The skill cooldown, like I said, is not important right now for solo fights. Uh, skill critical hit rate increases by 64.6%. Skill critical hit damage increases. This is the mod emergency measures. Fire skill power. That's fire damage that we're doing. Um, so we have the sk uh, fire skill power over here. Skill inside. Skill critical hit rate 115%. Uh, max MP, we want more MP, and if you have a max MP module, uh, component, excuse me, um, this is going to uh, stack up even more. So this is an important mod. Um, then we have skill critical hit damage, 64.6%, skill critical hit rate on top of this. Now, when landing a skill attack while the enemy is not targeting you, skill power 24% increase. This procs very, very well when the boss is immobilized. This is why you see in the beginning of the fight when you shoot out the first balls, you, you don't do that much damage. But the moment you knock the boss down, you see the HP bar go like zoop. And, and that's because you get the 50% increase in the skill power damage. Uh, skill critical hit damage, um, self-explanatory. Then we have skill duration to 36% to make it last longer. Um, and then we have skill duration, another skill duration, 20% on top of that, plus a little bit MP. So this that is the glass cannon build that I showcased in the beginning of the video. This will make you melt the bosses super quickly. But again, prepare your wallets. This is going to be very expensive. Only the transcendent mods in the beginning, if you want to max this out, it's five plus million gold only this mod everything else you have golden mods in here purple mods and stuff like that now let's talk about uh, the reactor and the modules i have done a little bit of testing right now this is the best reactor that i have for myself um the reason being is i don't have a general rounds one it's out of rotation right now and we need to have the tech skill power boost ratio in order to make more damage and tech skill is our our um bolt is a tech skill so you need to definitely have one if you're watching this video fresh because i'm gonna upload it today on the 24th of july if you watch this fresh the way you can get a tech skill ratio boost ratio is actually from the vobby runs they drop right there right now uh so if you go it's not gonna be for general rounds it's gonna be for special rounds but you also have nazistra devotion most likely so just use that I'll talk about the weapons in a second and I'll talk about fire rate because this is one of the topics about this build and I'll talk about fire rate in a second. So uh, over here, when we talk about the components, generally speaking, uh, you want to have the Slayer set effect, but since I don't have a perfect set, I'm not using it yet. You want the Slayer one because it will boost your skill power by another additional 26% um and yeah that's basically why this is very good however i don't have one and right now um instead of slayer i'm just i just put it in here to show you why slayer is good Slayer drops from pyromaniac use uh you know once you get to a poor part where you can actually kill the boss start grinding there for a perfect set um now you definitely want to have max mp as a as a proc on your sensor this is going to increase your mp plus the modifiers that you have on your modules is going to increase your mp the reason why we want mp is because i actually started testing this build when i had around 200 i didn't have a module equipped and it wasn't doing as much damage and you don't shoot as many balls out of your ult uh, when you don't have mp so the way this one works, you can see right now each ball over there that I shoot takes a lot of 
uh, MP. And if I had 200, I would have been done right now. And I l look how many more I just shot. It's just MP is super important in this build. That's why you want as much as possible MP. We don't care about any defensive stats. We don't care about HPs and defenses. Obviously, if you have good modules, keep them in there. If you have, um, you know, good sets, uh, keep them in there. Right now, I would just keep, um, for example, the Annihilation set with a good, um, you know, I would look for Annihilation. Let's say I have this one. And I would go for this set uh, for the time being because this is going to give me a skill duration 5.7%. So if you don't have Slayer, try to get at least Annihilation, at least a two-piece piece set so that you can get skill duration 57 on top of everything else. And then you start optimizing your components. You're looking for best stats perfectly if you can get some survivability on top of it. Perfect. If not, no biggie. You don't need the survivability in general, so don't care about this. Only look for a really good max MP. If you have a max MP uh, MP recovery modifier, this might be useful as well, but I don't know how quick and how strong this affects the recovery during the ult itself. So I have it thrown in here, but again, look for what you have work with what you have and and then start optimizing the build as you can see with those trashy components and this probably not the best uh, reactor uh, i'm still melting the bosses in 10 seconds so this is good enough now when we talk about the reactors try to get at least tech skill power boost ratio or fire boost ratio uh critical hit rate those are also very good uh, I have this particular one because it has Nazistra's Devotion, the weapon. The other good ones that I have, for example, this one is, um, is an interesting one. Uh, skill critical hit rate with additional skill attack against Colossus, uh, which is basically the bosses. Uh, this could be interesting or you would like to get some critical hit rate, critical hit damage if possible. So... Reactors are pure luck. You need to go and grind them off and, and get the best weapon, get the best uh, thing. Then, So that's a very di difficult topic, but try to get the one that works best for you. And now let's talk about the weapons. Now, the theory is that in order for you to shoot quicker, you, uh, you know, obviously your ult and uh, for it to work, you need to have higher fire rate. But it turns out that you don't need to have that actually fire uh, big of a fire rate uh, on the weapon itself. As you can see, it works perfectly fine with my low fire rate. And th this weapon, by the way, has a fire rate of 199. This, my main weapon, which is uh, Thunder Cage. I have a little bit invested into it, almost 500k DPS uh, Thunder Cage. Fire rate 833. In theory, this would have been better. But... What practice shows is that this is actually good enough, what I have right now. And um, the most important thing that you want to have in your ultimate weapon is those two modules. One of it is fire rate, 25%. And the other one is this sharp precision shot, which is at the first glance, it says fire rate minus 20%. 20% but if you get the stacks and you really easy get the stacks, and I'll show you in a second, um, you actually get 40% increase of fire rate. So it gives you, if, if we read the module, it says while pulling the trigger, fire rate plus 4%, and this stacks 10 times. So 10, you do calculations, you get 40%, which is the initial 20%. So basically, this module, when fully stacked up, gives you 20% 20, 20 fire rate on top. 20 plus the 25 from here, 20, 45% fire rate from the weapon itself. Uh, how do we say that, how do we see that we get the stacks? So basically, first of all, the icon for uh, your transcendent module uh, switch is this one. Uh, that means that you have the buff for uh, the switch of the weapon. And again, like I said, right now, this was me switching just manually the weapon to uh, my gun, which is boosting my skill power. Then what you want to do is you want to activate your second skill, which is overclock, and then you activate your ult. And then when you activate your ult, you roll once and you start shooting and you hold your left mouse button. This makes it shoot faster. And you can see on the left side, I also have 
the stacks um, going, right? So that's 10 stacks were going and uh, the damage was just going bananas. This is how it works. This is how you generally do the thing. Keep in mind that you need to hold the left mouse button on because you don't want to shoot separately because this is going to mess up the whole skill. You want to hold the left mouse button. This is how it works better. And pretty much this is the build. Pretty much this is what makes this build really strong. Why it is really good. Um, you need to prepare for it. You need to build it properly to make it work. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you enjoyed this guide, if you enjoyed this build, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to provide you with a team setup build as well or other you know, options uh, where you can you know, play around with the build as well. Let me know if this was useful. And I'm also working on other um, uh, descendants and other guides. Let me know which one would you like to see next. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.